Right, we're from Carnot Newman. This is Susanna. I've, uh, I've brought with me. Uh, Susanna's the head of uh, computing at uh, IT at the college, the uh, department. Uh, I'm the college's e-learning manager, and I've also been looking after A-level computing for, for quite a while, hence why I'm here. Okay, well, Susanna's just going to run you through a couple of little bits and bits. Mm -hmm. right. The skills and knowledge that the students would gain at GCSE will cover quite a few and be using quite a few of the units on our BTEC. So, for example, um, any hardware will um, help with Year 12, Unit 2. We also do software design and development unit, and that's sort of a, a gentle introduction to systems analysis. So the students are given a, a small programming project to do. They start with a little bit of data modelling. They'll then do a more detailed type of systems analysis unit. They'll look at the data analysis in more detail. They'll produce the data flow diagrams. They'll do more coding in that solution. And then year 13, uh, information systems, and then quite a few. Well, we've got event-driven programming and computer games, mostly programming. And some project planners and database design. So a lot of the theory will help them to build the skills and the analysis for year 12 and year 13 software development. So the GCSE computer can feed into both of our level three computing courses. From three, it was just sounds quite quite simple there, you know, outline the actual A level um, qualification there. But I wanted to actually talk in, in detail of, wh of where we started and, and where we're at now. Uh, one thing that Alan's already sent you. Um, this link, I don't know if any of you have seen it, but it's about the, well, there's no Wi-Fi, so I can't, of can't show you the marvels of technology. Um, it's, it's all about the, the digitally illiterate and, and research that's gone on about where the Raspberry Pi has come from and things that, projects like that, to try and encourage children to get involved with problem solving and coding and development from a very young age. And that's why, you know, when Alan talked to me about this group, months ago and we've, we've had conversations over the last year or so over all sorts of different things. I find it so inspiring personally that actually there is people who want to get involved and want to push these things forward. I think it's absolutely brilliant. Um, really for the building blocks for me, when, when we come to, and maybe this is a reflection of, of me and my childhood, when we, as Alan with his uh, uh, ZX Spectrums and BBC Micros and all that sort of stuff, one of the things we found on uh, AS computing at the start is obviously, you know, the students that come with us, they, they can be quite intimidated by coding. And what we try and do is promote that with as much fun as possible. So showing that, you know, development can be problem solving, it will be challenging, but also, as you were saying before, quite rightly about thinking out the box and that sort of stuff, is that once they challenge and once they get that sort of excitement from fixing a problem that they actually enjoy working on, there's a real spark there and that can really ignite them. So what starts off with, um, you know, using Visual Basic, we start off with doing retro gaming suites. So again, we've got things like This Is Pong, we've got Pac-Man, we've got Battleships, we've got Hangman, and you can think, well, they sound quite simplistic games, but the actual code that they have to write that goes behind that is actually pretty sophisticated. I mean, this is a multi-threaded application that one of our AS students did within about six weeks uh, with us now, there's, there's possibly a good five or six hundred lines of code with all the validation, etc., etc. Hopefully, I can just kind of get this to get this to run for you, um, just to kind of show you. So what they've actually done is created an application. If it actually comes up, there we go. So you can kind of see the little ball. So you can kind of, I probably, I'll probably lose it. There we go, Andy, won't lose. Um, but you, what you can kind of do is you can use the paddles. Here we go to reflect it, and it kind of like you know it moves along. Now, for that to actually work. After six weeks of coding, it's pretty impressive. You know, as far as they've got multi-threaded applications, they've got it handling different events. They've got the actual the the processes of, of programming itself. You know, things like handling data structures using arrays, 2D arrays, and quite complex loops and things like that to solve this sort of problem. But because it's through gaming and because it's through fun, they really really enjoy it. Um, from there, after a little bit later. Um, obviously, we're looking at logic, we're looking at building their algorithms, skills. We start to look at things like battleships, so slightly more complex where they, they, they're playing against. So still very much in a console environment, still not particularly brilliant interfaces. But it's all focusing on those logic skills, those coding skills, to get the skill sets up to enable them in the second year. 
From there, then they move into more um, visual things. So this is what one of our, um, again, this is possibly after about maybe two months, maybe three months of, of ability of coding where they can actually write a fully functional Pac-Man that works with characters. All each one of these is individual, pro, uh, individually programmed. They're all individual objects that they've, they've programmed that, again, are all di handling different events and things like that. And again, this is after relatively, from doing nothing, from doing nothing at school, to being able to do this in the, in the space of a couple of months again, is, for me, is, is also is always a joy to see and really, really inspiring. Um, from there, okay, we end up in A2. So after a piece of coursework at, at A level, where it's, it's always a business solution, they end up with you know uh, into an A2 situation where they basically got to find their own project. Now we're quite fortunate that again we've got quite a lot of technology that we've put investment into um, to enable them to be able to do different and variety of different, again, interesting projects. Again, you know, we would encourage and always would encourage that the students do something that they're interested in. So this is a reflection really on the different students' personality, as you again, thinking out the box, something they're interested in. So we've had physics simulators, personal trainer apps for their phones. We've got loads of iPhone and iPad revision applications and stuff like that. Um, we've got a VB visual based booking system, so it was a theatre system, so it modelled different theatres, you could load in different maps of different theatres for booking and you could click on the seats and it would tell you it was like a real time system, very very impressive. Reaction problems, which was a thing to test people's reactions and, and added like a database and stuff, we had A2 mass revisions, <coughs> one, of the, one of the nicest applications we had was a particular very gifted student of ours this year wrote an app that interacted with our MIS system. Our MIS system is called Firefly. And he wrote a personal organizer for his iPhone where basically he logged in effectively using quite a lot of advanced PHP and um, Object C and things like that to actually pull the data from our Firefly system when he logged in and showed his timetable, what lessons he had on what day, homeworks and all sorts of stuff that he passed from our MIS system. Um, again, absolutely a lovely, a lovely uh, project there. 2D flight simulators, I'm going to show you not that one but another one in a minute. So again, from again, literally in a year they've gone from nothing to being able to do some relatively some quite advanced stuff. Um, this is one of the physics simulators. Um, so this was a, a, a chap called Jack and what he'd done is he'd modeled different gravities uh, here and you could put your velocity in and your angle in and basically you could uh, shoot your, your ball across and again it would give you different um, obviously depending on, on the things you, you're inputting it would obviously give you different outputs and you could model different experiments. Again something you have to do in physics. Uh, that was this is only a little part of what his project was about, but again, quite you know quite advanced stuff when you get behind it. One of the one of the other nice ones uh, again you can't see it too well, but this was a physics uh, revision game that again one of our students Jordan um, did this year, and it's based on on quite a cheesy sort of space nine oh um, nine thousand and one. I don't know if you've ever seen it. it was a, it was a space game in the sort of early nineties sort of thing, and he basically modelled the whole thing. So he took. This is a bit I've ripped from his coursework. He took basically a lot of the, the physics that he was interested in and, and how he was going to model that and he basically produced a game that was modelled on those physics principles and from there he, you know, the game would test the student as a revision app. Now hopefully, I can kind of show you this <coughs> sort of working. So it starts off with this, um, with the way you start a new game. There's a little bit of sound, but I don't think you'd be able, particularly be able to hear it too well. So you have the first, well, the game stage, and then you have the next stage. Now the next stage, um, you can't see it particularly well. There's the, there's a spaceship, and basically the spaceship can fire and and kind of all go against all the asteroids. And there's various different levels as you kind of go through this this sort of project. Uh, there you go, I crashed. Um, I knew I wasn't particularly very good at it, but never mind. Um, and basically, again, you can you can model all of those things. When you get to the end of the level, there's then questions on have you got to land your spaceship on a different planet and depending on the different planets it asks you um, like how you would land it and the trajectory would you would use and again some quite advanced physics things. But so really as a revision tool, the students' his test group that he used it for absolutely loved it. You know, and some of them were actually using it before the exam to test their maths and to test their physics or the maths within their physics. Uh, which again, considering that this is only sort of 18 months of, from doing absolutely nothing, 
you know, you're getting to some quite advanced stuff. And really, the message, the message from me, really, is obviously next year we want to push the envelope a little bit more. We, we want to go, you know, more with these projects. So next year we've got um, a university on board which is providing us with a, a, a 3D games engine. So uh, we, we, we're kind of, we're, we're very lucky in that sense. So some of our students will be doing full 3D and stereoscopic 3D projects for, for a second years. Uh, we've got, again, loads of iPhone, iPad type apps. Loads of Android type apps, again, because it's a bit more of an open platform for us to use, as well as some very nice business applications, some stock management booking systems, etc., etc. So we're, we're hoping to have more creative um, projects. But the message from me, really, as a teacher available, is it inspires me if students could come to Newman or could come to anywhere to on A level computing and if they'd done something, you know, and, and just think. If they did have some experience, if they grow so much with us in 18 months, in two years, you know, if they already came from a, from a higher starting platform, where could they end up, in, again, in such a, a short period of time, you know? Um, 